Edward Furlong with us. Mikey, this is so badass. Thanks for joining us, man. Thank you, man. Edward, yeah. what is up, dude? <laughs> dude, just glad to be here, man. Yeah. Glad to be here. I'm like totally impressed because we're in that hotel room. <laughs> Whole we got, setup here. We got the yeah. setup, man. You guys yeah. are legit. Yeah. No, we <laughs> yeah. are. We wouldn't, we wouldn't shortchange you. You know, this is a cool experience for us. Of course, you know, like Mike and I were talking, we, you know, we've gone through, you know, your career of movies and kind of grew up with you at the same time. And so it's, it's yeah. kind of a trip too for us to come and, and talk about, you know, sobriety. I know that there's some of the things I know about your path too. And you I guys are both sober, right? Well, yeah, mine was alcohol, so that was what mine mm. was. And Mikey had uh, uh, cocaine usage. I had cocaine. I did. Uh, I was in rehab for cocaine and whatnot. So I drink on occasion, yeah. but I drugs are out. Drugs yeah. are out. So sober to be like the definition of it, no, because I'll still have cocktails on the weekend and whatnot. But yeah. I was what Jason calls a normie. I can have yeah. some and then stop. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. That's right. amazing, dude. Like, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I have like one beer now. I'm like, okay, I need a braille. <laughs> yeah. hey, I, you know what? And that's yeah. the weird thing for me is that, you know, my sides, it differed. You know, it was more on my dad's side. It was, you know, not that alcohol is clearly a drug, but it would, you know, classify differently. You yeah. know, they were more the, the hardcore drugs, whereas my mom's was the alcohol. And I'm thankful that, you know, I tried a couple of drugs and it was like no take, but then. When I went through some crazy trauma, yeah. you know, 10, 12 years ago, it was like, it took off. It just, it, it got worse and worse and worse. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much like both. I mean, and alcohol, I mean, from what I've seen, I mean, alcoholism is like running my family and everything. Yeah. But like, uh, yeah, I mean, it fucks you up sometimes worse than drugs do. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. It's, 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 it's pretty gnarly. Yeah. It's pretty gnarly, dude. So, like, were you introduced to it at a young age being, like, because Terminator 2, was that your big breakthrough as an actor? Yeah, I mean, you know, like, I, yeah, basically, like, right at a very young age, um, yeah, I, it was, it's, like, just one of those stories, dude. Like, when I first smoked weed, I was, like, ready to do everything, <laughs> you know? Like, I was, like, dude, this is amazing. Like, I, I was, like, a... You know, I, I don't know. I felt like an awkward <clears throat> kid, sort of, sure. you know, had felt like I had trouble fitting in. And then I just, like, found, you know, yeah. like, this 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 world that I could live in and sure. the life of the party and, you know, all of that. Yeah. So, you know, it was really hard for me to stop, you know. And thank God, dude, I got, like, two and a half years. Oh, yeah. That's, like, That's awesome. Great, dude. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy, dude. I'm coming up to three years, but... You know, I mean, for the longest time, I just basically, like, gave up on being able to quit because I kind of, um, how do I say, like, based everything on, like, who I am right. yeah. with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like, uh, you know, and I, I couldn't, I didn't know who I would be, right. you know, and that's still, like, a struggle that I go through every day. I mean, two and a half years. And I'm still figuring it out. Yeah, yeah. you know. No, absolutely. Well, it, it absolutely does for those that are listening that maybe haven't gone through it or, or have someone that they know to understand that it becomes such a part of your psyche and your identity because you start to feel that connectivity that you want with other people, but you can only do it like when you're in the moment of using, which is like yeah. the ultimate trick that just fucks with your head. Um, at least I know for me, that's what it was. It, you know, and I still struggle with confidence myself. So it's, you know. Yeah. You know, yeah. You say that. It's uh, it's weird, and and you know, that's the thing. Like I think, like about quitting is, you know, you really have to want it. Mm -hmm. And like by the end, I was, you know, addicted to heroin, and you know, I was a slave to it, and basically, you know. The party was gone, and I was like fooling myself. You know what I mean? Like the lifestyle that I was going towards, which was fun in the beginning, was gone, and it hadn't gone for a long time. It was just like basically a one-track mind, me, myself, and I, and a fucking needle, like yeah. every day. You know, and that's that's all it became. You know, sure. and just uh, yeah. And I, I, it was a while there. I was like, dude, I really want to stop. Yeah. So it's like when I. I knew I was going to quit when mm -hmm. I quit, you know. 
Well, that's the thing too. You like you said, you have to want it because a lot of people, you know, they'll get cornered or kind of forced into a rehab or something. That's not going to do any good. They have to want to quit in order for it to stick. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like, oh no, I'm doing it because my chick wants me to or my parents want me to. I don't want to. I feel like I'm fine, but blah blah blah. It's like that's not going to work. Then you have to want to get sober and you have to you know, want to stay sober in order for it to work. You got to do it for yourself, not for anybody else. Oh, hell yeah. You know I mean, so. yeah. it's crazy, dude. Cause like now I'll be like on the other side of the situation. It's like, I even have a dear friend of mine that's been struggling with mm -hmm. it and I want to do everything I can to help her. And I just want to like, you know, I don't know, just like slap her and just be like, dude, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. don't you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and, uh, no man, she's just no. Laughing. It's just and it's it. I've been there. Like I totally understand. Yeah. Like I was just, you know, I yeah. There's nothing you can say or do to force somebody. You can't make somebody do what right. you want them to do. They have to come to that realization on their own. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, and that reality that uh, there's two things that happen. You either get clean or you die. No, yeah, and that's it, you know, or you just even worse, you know what I mean? Like you don't die and you're um, just like basically like, you know, lose your mind or like yeah. lose everything, you know, realize that your life basically added up to nothing, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, that just scares me, dude. like, yeah. you know, it's like I got sober kind of late. I got sober, um, when I was like 41 or 40. It's been two and a half years, but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, even then I'm like, damn, dude, so much time yeah. lost, you know, doing that. Like, About at what age did you start using anything? Um, kind of in my twenties. Oh, it's okay. like when I started kind of getting into the cocaine, the heroin. Just that party offered a line kind of thing or? Um. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. dude. Like, you know, in the Hollywood scene, you know, back then, I mean, even now, but like, you know, Coke was everywhere. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. And it's not a problem. It was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> well, it's like Nothing Coke was together, Hollywood. like it's chips like... and blow. Like, it, was, it was great. It was great times at the time. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's one of the funny things we had Brandon Novak on, and uh, we, we all joked about it. it was people like, oh, you must have been miserable. No, at first it was fucking fun. It was awesome at first. Yeah, I wouldn't have been doing it if it wasn't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, dude. I said the same shit, dude. When I went into rehab, they were like, okay, now what, what are you running from? What was your struggles? And I'm like, nothing. Have you ever done coke? It's a fucking blast. Like, I had a good time on it, you know, because... In rehab, like Brandon said, right. my worst day sober is still better than my best day high. And he's like, that's complete bullshit. Yeah. I've had some plenty of good times high. Yeah. But you're fucking, ultimately, you're killing yourself. And it's and it becomes very much a falsehood. Yeah, and like yeah. you said, the party's over. You know? Yeah, well, eventually it was like, you know, I mean, yeah, it started out with like, you know, yeah, like going out mm -hmm. and coke and pussy and all of it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then eventually, like... The pussy started getting edged out, mm -hmm. and it just became more and more about the blow. Right, and it's right. just like that's. I mean, it just. I was the, the party was gone, dude. Like, yeah. It just. It wasn't about that anymore. And you know that. You know what I mean? Like I'm sure that. I mean, I've met people that can do that, and they're just like fine. Yeah. But right. like you know, if you're like someone who, you know, is obsessing more on actually getting high than you are on actually being around people, right? It's like. You know, that's when you have a problem. That's no, yeah, for problem. sure. It's like the main focus is just finding another bag, you know, as opposed to getting shit done. Because I have friends myself that have been doing it since longer than I can remember and still do it and have a fucking great job. You know, they're yeah. still, they do it recreationally and whatnot, and they're just, I, I don't get it. I don't understand. It sounds like it's fucking miserable. I only did it once and my heart was like... You gotta level oh, it out dude. with some Jameson or something. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I did that too. Mm -hmm. Well, let's kind of jump back. I'm curious of, of how you even got into acting. Did you have a bug as a kid or, you know, was like family supportive or... Hold that thought. You were found at a YMCA, no? No. Uh, it was a boys club. Boys club. Boys okay. club. Boys and girls club. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's weird, man. It, it's it's kind of crazy. Like, uh... You know, it's sort of like the secret in a weird way. Sure. Like, I mean, as a kid, I loved movies. Sure. I used to watch a ton of movies. And uh, 
I, I wanted to make movies as a kid. I wanted to be in movies. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't have any connection or anything with Hollywood at all. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, I definitely obsessed on it sure. as a kid. Sure. And, um, yeah, so I was at a boys club, and this casting director came up and asked me. It was Mally Finn, and she asked me if I wanted to try out for a movie. She didn't say what movie, you know, and uh, I ran home. And I was like, oh my God, they want me to try out for a movie, my aunt and uncle at the time. They're like, well, it might be like child porn or something. Right. <laughs> I mean, like, you never had a jinx coming up to you. Like, I'm like, sure she was eyeing you. I wouldn't trust time. that, you know. <laughs> and it's like, you know, they called and then, bam, it was the, uh, it was, it was for Terminator 2. Uh, and it's just like, yeah, man. And it was, it was crazy, you know, like, insane. just saying. Yeah, like I remember my first uh, reading was um, just, you know, I and, and I, it's like I, I was like in this whole place. I would run away from home and everything. So then it was amazing because like the casting director's like, I just want you to, you know, um, uh, make it up as you go along, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, just be mad at your mom. So like that was totally easy. You can cuss at her. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> like, so, you know, because you you missing your aunt and uncle. So were you living with your aunt and uncle then, and left, had left your mom? Is that what? Yeah, at the time. At wow. the time. Yeah, yeah. And I'm good. I'm good with all of them now. Excellent. But um, yeah. So it's just you know like instantly I got like how much of like a therapeutic thing like acting was, and just yeah. I loved it. Yeah. And I just you know. I don't know. It's like you know, winning the golden ticket. What yeah. the irony of it? it wow. Because I've had. I, I remember we when, when we talked with um, Andy Buckley from the Office, and he was talking about the, you know excellent casting directors. It's almost like they have a sense. It's almost like the lady could see the angst in you. Of, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. because I remember for me as a kid feeling mm -hmm. that you know that frustration. We're pretty much the same age, and that crazy frustration. And here's this character, John Connor, when I felt like totally powerless. Uh, you know, short, skinny kid at the time, you know, and then, wow, here's this kid, and I can kind of relate to that, and, you know, yeah. and doing all the, the, you know, the lines and everything, and, and so, what, really, what was it like, like, when we got on set, because here you are, you're like, Linda Hamilton, Arnold Schwarzenegger, James Cameron, and, oh my god, it was, uh, it was, uh, you know, it was life-changing, I mean, yeah. it, um, you know, it was amazing and overwhelming and like everything all at once. Like, uh, you know, um, I mean, obviously, like we grew up with Arnold and the Predator and sure. shit. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, and then Jim, like, you know, I mean, he was a director that I knew of. I knew his name because he had directed Aliens and yeah. like the original Terminator and shit. And, uh, you know, it was just a huge, like, <clears throat> learning experience, you know, like, um, it uh it was crazy because like shooting a movie like we shot that over like nine months mm -hmm. yeah. and uh it it's kind of like a you know very slow slow process especially on a movie like that like the scene in the river was like really really long we spent like over a month doing that oh shit so you're talking about the chase scene yeah the chase yeah. scene and it's just like you know as a kid i'm learning how movies are made and shit so it's like you know I, I was so, I was like baffled when I first saw the movie. I was like, holy shit. I was, gonna, I thought it was going to look like shit, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Like, wow, they actually knew what they were doing. You know, like, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. It's fucking crazy to jump just to, you know, I'm sure when that came out, you're just celebrity overnight. Like, that had to have been weird to adjust to, right? Like, um, yeah. All I of mean, a sudden, yeah, it was in a weird way. Like, um, and don't get me wrong, like, I don't take any of it back. Like, sure. I've been blessed. I've had the best, like, journey ever. Yeah. But, like, um, you know, yeah, it was, it's weird because you're you, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So you're having a different point of view than everybody else right. is. Right. I think everybody else is seeing it much more than you are. You're just kind of, like, sort of in the middle of it all. Right. It's kind of like, you know. But you're bugging out because there's, like, fucking, you know, photographers chasing you and shit. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. you're like, uh, you know, um, and I mean, I guess I was kind of lucky because it didn't really, well, no, I'm wrong. It didn't go <laughs> in my head. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's not, it, how could it, it not, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you're in this, all yeah. these great movies and whatnot, like, 
It, yeah. It's normal. I mean, I would imagine it would go to your But it's, 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 it's definitely like, you know, it was more like just, what the fuck? Yeah. It's like, you know, what's going on? And you feel like an awkward kid. And you feel even more like, what is up? You know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it was a trip, man. It was a trip. Imagine. But it was like, it's weird, man. Like, with success, it's like, it never feels like, there's no, like, end point where you're like, dude, like, I've made it. Right, You know right, what right. I mean? There's always someone better. There's always some, you know, you're not good enough to do fish. this. You know, like, <laughs> I mean, it's... Or they got paid more, or they got this chick, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you just kind of, you know, because... You know, it's 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 a tough business. But. Oh fuck! Yeah, yeah, I can only imagine. I did radio for twenty years. I couldn't imagine if I had actually come to LA after I graduated film school. I need all the like process. Like a little plus. Yeah, yeah, you're good. That's cool. Okay. Um, so after Terminator Two, what uh, you know, some subsequent roles in there. I mean, you got started getting a lot of accolades after that too. So the MTV yeah. awards and uh, was it Sundance Picture Awards? I'm trying to remember what some of the other awards and nominations. And I mean, it's big actors: Edward Norton, Meryl Streep in there. I mean, you know, a series of movies. So, what is that like when you because Terminator Two when that came out, you were sixteen. Uh, no, when Terminator 2 came out, I was 13. 13? Oh, okay. I couldn't remember what the, how long it took after filming the edit from that. Yeah. So at 13, and Hollywood's kind of a buzzing for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it was, uh, like I said, it's weird. You're kind of like, you know, in the middle of it. So I didn't really feel, it's funny, dude. Like, when I look back at it, I'm like, wow, dude, that was, that was gnarly. But, um. You know, um, I was blessed, dude. Like, I was really blessed. And, um, you know, it's weird, dude. Like, the things, like, we manifest and sure. as a kid, you know. I think we lose that as we get older. Yeah, right. But, um, you know, and, yeah, dude, like, acting, you know. I was lucky, dude. Like, so many people don't know what they want to do for a living. Or I still don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I feel like, like, it's like that for a lot of people. And I'm blessed because I love what I do. Yeah. You know, and, and it's always been, you know, and when you love what you do, you're good at it. Yeah, for sure. It's really incredible, too, because you were saying as a kid, you knew you wanted to be in movies, and you're in one of the biggest greatest movies ever in my opinion terminator at 13 you yeah know? i mean you're still a fucking kid at 13 and <laughs> oh, you yeah. are already and that's no commercials first no you know anything just straight to the bigs that's fucking awesome man yeah that is yeah. incredible good for you what? yeah it's insane oh yeah it's, it's crazy dude like uh yeah that shit you know doesn't happen <laughs> <laughs>
come up to me all the time. That you know, a lot of people said it's changed their lives, sure. and then, like yeah. you know, they, it, it's shown at school, like oh, yeah. social yeah. studies yeah. classes. Yeah. Yeah. So very informative too. Like yeah. when it first starts out, you're like, oh fuck, like this is gnarly, but. For those listening who haven't seen it, American History X, like, watch that. Get to the end of it, watch which you'll have no problem because it's a great movie, but get to the end of it, and it is a very, it's a good message. It's a positive message. I'm getting the chills talking about it because it was such an intense scene when Ed Norton was holding you in the bathroom. It was like, oh, fuck, like, that got me choked up because he finally got it. He understood, you know what I'm saying? And it yeah. was too late for you. Yeah, he's so amazing, man, dude. You guys all were. So Everybody in that movie amazing, killed it. Even, yeah. uh, what's that big guy's name? He plays Ethan, Tuna? Ethan Suplee. Ethan, yeah, he was great in it, too. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it was just, it was yeah. very... What was the process of it? Because, um, <laughs> you're very, uh, of course, because it's a character, people, so those that don't understand that, what, it, what kind of process do you go through to get into that kind of mindset? Because being that it's not of your nature at all, you're nothing like that. Yeah. Uh, people that follow you on social media can clearly see you are nothing like that whatsoever. At least in public. At least. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. uh, that, how, do you, how do you get into such a dark like place of that kind of character? Dude, I love it, man. Like, really? I mean, honestly, like, uh, you know, I'd like to say that I got like really, you know, like, uh, you know, like, you know, like into my character and had to like, you know, become, the, I, I naturally as an actor, dude, like I can just kind of be me and then when the camera rolls, just go into it. Mm -hmm. And for me, I mean, you know, I have a lot of anger, so it's easy <laughs> to kind of tap into that, right, right, you right. know what I mean? And it's a nice excuse, you know, for sure. Um, but, uh, and that's why I love it, dude, like, uh, you know. It's, uh, for me, it's sort of, um, yeah, like I said, like therapeutic, you know, mm -hmm. just to kind of do it. And, you know, like I said, you know, there's a lot of things that like, you know, you're doing on it and we're just like, I don't know, dude, I don't know. But like, I think it's important to, you know, know, I mean, for me as an actor, I, I feel completely separate from the character because I know that I'm playing a character, you right, know what right. I mean? And, uh, you know, it could be, it could be whatever. I mean, I, you know, I could be saying racist shit, but I could be thinking about like my anger towards my dad or something, right. you know what I mean? Like, um, it's more the subtext of what you're saying as opposed to the actual verbiage. Verbiage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um. You know, I mean, dude, like, um, Norton was, like, you know, he's, I mean, he was amazing, dude. I mean, he, he was on point the whole time, and he was very professional, and, you know. There was some pretty fucking method, intense scenes. Method, in was was he cool. more of a method actor, kind of stayed to character a little bit, not so much of a shut-off kind of guy like no. yourself? Or, no, not really. Not really. Um... I don't see too much like method acting or anything like that. Yeah. Who would be Who's method acting? That's like Heath Ledger. No, that's like uh, uh, Jim Daniel Curry. Day Lewis. Daniel Day Daniel Lewis Day is Lewis, cr yeah. Yeah, crazy. He's, he only takes so many roles and then he, you know, yeah. he's Abe Lincoln. Hi, I'm Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, Jim Carrey when he was uh, Andy Kaufman, he'd walk around and said, as the Tony, Tony Clifton character, and he'd walk around and. Yeah, you know, right. and he would be that way, and people had to call him Andy on set. You know, it's like yeah. See, I would go crazy. <laughs> right? I think like, I would if I had to do that, that. Like, I would like go crazy. I couldn't do that because I, I don't know. That would fuck me up. Yeah, like, yeah. I have to go home, take off my clothes, jerk off his head. <laughs> <laughs> jerk off you know? his head. <laughs> Yeah. And tomorrow yeah. we'll go back to being Daniel <laughs> Vineyard. Yeah. Yeah. Just sit here in peace and punch the clown by myself and punch in the clown. Don't yeah. steal my clown punch. You talking about that. That's, that's forever my psyche now. Punch in the clown. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Uh, so what were your like, really cool on-set kind of memories of stuff? I mean, everyone from, you know, from Arnold to, you know... Either Norton or whoever. I mean, you got so many again, like Meryl Streep's in there, and, you know. Yeah. These encounters with people, and and through to different points in your in your life too. That I, I would assume because you were growing up on set, that some yeah. of these people maybe like a mentor that that were something positive. You know, Jeff Bridges. I worked oh, with him. Oh God, yeah. Uh, back in the day, like he was like my second movie, and mm -hmm. uh, Jeff was a mentor. Dude. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, working with him. 
you know, it, it was, it was amazing. Like, you know, and he's so friendly. He's such a good guy, you know, and, uh, you know, I didn't have, like, as a kid, like, so many male role, role models, right. you know what I mean? But, like, I looked up to Jeff, and uh, I learned a lot. Yeah. You know, like, I remember, like, when I was working with him, he constantly, when we're not doing it, when we're, like, in between takes, he'd be like, okay, sh sh just don't do anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, like, it could piss you off, but he's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and he meant, he meant well, like, you know, and it's like, yeah, dude, like, I learned so much. He's so good. He's so, like, natural, dude. Like, yeah. he's so relaxed mm -hmm. when he does it. And, uh, you know, and then just from then on, dude, like, I've, I've had amazing times for different reasons on a bunch of shit, even on the crappy movies, you know, like, one of the crappy, well, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> It might be one of them I like, though. Oh, no. No, you know what? I did this movie called Knights of the Quest. Okay. A long time ago, and I don't even uh, know really what happened with it. I don't even know if it came out here. And it was, like, supposed to be this international movie or whatever. But, you know, like, basically what it comes down to is I, like, lived in Italy for six months. And that was amazing. Like, yeah. that was, you know, and that was, like, when I was in my 20s. And, yeah. Are you the Edward from the America? Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's the universal language, man. That's right. That's yeah. right. Oh, shit. Um, I, what was I going to ask about? I just had a brain fart. I got a reset. Somebody rewind. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. So, what was it like when one of the, the, the movies that ended up becoming a cult classic that initially wasn't, though, Detroit Rock City, I stole all your one-liners. I don't know how many times I've told people, like they say in the tampon biz, I'll see you next period. Yeah. So what was that process like? Because I know that Gene Simmons was kind of hands-on in the production, too. Obviously, you had the scenes with Shannon Tweed, fucker. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Damn, dude. Yeah. Shannon God, Tweed. Um, yeah, but that had to have been a pretty cool and fun one to do. Um. Yeah, dude. Like, it was amazing. I like, don't um, think I could have done it. I yeah. <laughs> I dude, done I don't remember, like... Tweet. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> and she almost, like, wanted to, you know, she wanted to, like, leave Jean. I was like, no, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to break up this beetle. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's fucking dumb. Uh, it's like, my marriage will never be the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. But, uh, <laughs> I fucking love it. Oh, my God. I fucking love it. Yeah, but, um, dude, the first, the first fucking um, person that I got a call from yeah. for that movie was Gene. Oh, no dude. shit. Yeah, dude. So, How did that go? Wait, I have to ask, did he do the standard... Edward, this, this is Gene Simmons yes. from Kiss. Yes. From yes. See? Yes. I yes. Knew it. Okay. Yeah. My uh, my friend Tim and I, we uh, we uh, we were just like coming home, and you know I had an answering machine at the time. That's like something you play messages on. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> For our younger audience. So I'm, I'm walking around the house and I'm playing like my messages. My friend Tim's with me, and then he comes running in the room and he's like, "Dude." Gene Simmons just left a message on your phone, man. <laughs> like, he just called you, and I was like, really? And I mean, like, I was a Kiss fan, but I wasn't, like, super, like, he really is. Dude. Sure. Like, and, uh, yeah, he was like, uh, yeah, he was like, hey, this is Gene Simmons from Kiss, and I'd like you to come to my birthday party. I want to, you know, pitch a movie to you and, like, all that shit, so... It was on, dude. It was crazy. Uh, so I met him at his birthday party, and, yeah. Where was it at? Did you go to his house? It was, no, it was somewhere... It was like some bar uh, okay. in Beverly Hills uh -huh. or something, and uh, yeah, dude, that's fucking. He sick. was balling, dude. I'll tell you that. Oh, I bet. Really I bet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that band has generated so much fucking money. I know because I'm a big Kiss nerd. Yeah, I saw him like yeah. twelve times in twenty four months, and yeah. it's on my bucket list to see Kiss. I have yet to do oh, it. Oh, dude, it's, it's amazing. On my list. Are they done? No, they postponed because of COVID. Yeah, I um, saw the last tour. Did you go on that? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, I was supposed to go, and my daughter got sick, and I was like, son of a bitch. And then my daughter got really into Tool, so I took my kids for Christmas last year to see Tool, and oh, she's like, yeah. Dad, 
And we could have seen Kiss as well. I'm like, yeah, we could have seen Kiss as well. But I get tickets for Motley Crue. That's my favorite band, so we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. But I heard Tool was amazing. Oh, phenomenal! Life. Yeah, phenomenal! Fuck, man. But uh, that's someone I want to see. Yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, I, okay. Being that it was in the soundtrack, you have seen G and R live, right? See what? Guns N' Roses. No! No! You never I saw don't. Guns N' Roses? I want to! No, 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 no. All time favorite band, Guns N' Roses for me. All time really? favorite. Yeah. Really? Oh my god. And yeah, dude, I want to. And they've been touring, yeah. and like, they were gonna. I'm, I'm gonna try to go see them. Yeah, for dude. sure. I saw. I saw Guns N' Roses in, I think it was 07, so Axel was there, but it was, it was even after Buckethead. I couldn't tell you anybody. Dizzy Reed was still on the keyboards, but I everybody think, else I think DJ Ashpaw was playing guitar by then. I don't I have no idea. I didn't yeah. recognize anyone except Axel and Dizzy Reed. And that, I mean, it was still cool to see Axel, but I would have loved to see Dove, Slash, you know, Matt yeah. Sorum and all that. But, you know, what are you going to do? Maybe. But they still rock pretty good, though, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I got to see him with the, the uh, reunion with Tuff and Slash, and it was. I'm too them. obsessed with them for them not to rock. Like, even if it sucked, I'd be like, it was the fucking best show and I've they, ever been to because that's just how much I love them. They didn't suck. They were better than you could have asked, and they were on time, and Axel was phenomenal. It was like, on time. All right, this is nothing that we were told oh it would be. God. The pattern has changed. So, yeah. what he changed. So, yeah. Uh, but sorry to jump over that. So, Detroit Rock City. Uh, some of the great moments from that because it had to be. Just kind of a cool adventure. I mean, beyond the Shannon Tweed thing, fucker. Yeah. Uh, it was, dude. Like, um, yeah, man. It, we got to literally, like, we flew in a Kiss jet. You know, the Kiss jet, yeah. which was yeah, awesome. We, we uh, got to, like, basically go backstage and hang out with Kiss, have dinner with Kiss. You know, it's like... Uh, it was pretty awesome, dude. Did you guys all bond, you and the other three guys that played with you in the movie, did you guys all bond pretty well offset as well? Because it looked like you yeah. did during the movie. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And Jimmy DeBello is like, mm -hmm. still one of my good friends. Oh, cool, dude. cool. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Did Jimmy was Trip? Yeah, he was yeah, Trip. Trip. He was fucking hilarious. Mm -hmm. Spilled yeah. the bong water on the bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dude, throughout that whole movie, it's funny, because like, one of the biggest things that I remember is we had... Uh, Ocarina of Time, you know, like the Zelda game. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, yeah, me and Jimmy were just playing the fuck out of it. <laughs> so we'd literally be up all night playing Zelda and then, you know, getting to work with Shoot, like three hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which could have fit the characters pretty well, I would think. Yeah. Is there, what, are you big on like the rehearsal process? And it's, to me, it seemed to also Detroit Rock City probably had some room for improv as well, or am I. Were they pretty pretty well stuck on the lines and this is how it is, this is how we want you guys to go about it? It was pretty, yeah, there really wasn't much improv. I mean, everything was on the script. Yeah. I would imagine Gene Simmons being, read, read the script, go by the script. <laughs> well, he was more a producer, he wasn't a director. Well, I, well yeah. he was hands-on, no, wouldn't he not? Or? Well, he wasn't there the whole time. Oh, he okay. was like touring with Kiss. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Right. Now, Eddie, when you make out with my wife, <laughs> use tongue. Did he not joke. want to be there for Dude, him? I saw him at the show, and he's like, literally, because we, we went back there for the photo op right. and everything, and he was like, yeah, this guy made out with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I still remember shit. that. Uh, little does he know, man. You, know? <laughs> you almost came in between the two of them. Little does he know. Uh, yeah. So, beyond, you know, the initial kind of manifesting things, it's interesting you brought up the secret, because I'm listening to it on audiobook, and it's all about manifestation. Yeah. Um, was there any other roles that kind of came about? Because I was afraid when you're talk, going to talk about a role that, that you didn't like so much. Um, because I actually really liked the Crow movie. Yeah. And because I love that whole story from the initial of the comic book and what it was. And um, yeah, kind of tell me how that one came about. Because, you, you know, kind of another reimagining of the Crow presence, you know. Because people have this perception that that have never seen The Crow or that have only seen one of them. Well, The Crow was Brandon Lee. No, 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 The Crow was The Crow. Brandon Lee was his character. And then the next movie, he was his is character. Is that how it is in the comics? I don't, I only ever read some of the initial ones. My yeah. understanding is it stayed with with Draven. So, okay. but I'm just curious what it was like for you to kind of step into a sequel of a movie that, you know, had an, an iconic individual, but you weren't playing the same character. It's a totally different character altogether. Yeah. It was fun, dude. Um, you know, like, 
you know, obviously, like, you know, you can't really fuck with Brandon Lee, you know what I mean? So it's like, I looked at it as a completely, completely different thing, obviously. But, um, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Um, Funny story, actually. Uh, This is a drunken story. (laughs) Is... uh, we were spo- I felt I feel so bad even today, but like we were supposed to start start shooting, and uh, I think we were like a month out or something. And uh, I'm still friends with this guy. He's one of my best friends, Mike. But he was kind of my roommate at the time, uh-huh. and I was really drunk. And I tried to stab him with a butter knife, and I like jumped off my couch, and I'm like, ah! And then all he did was back up, and then I fell down on the floor, and then like broke my wrist. Oh shit! So I had to tell them, like, okay, guys, I'm sorry. You might have to fire me. Like, <clears throat> I broke my wrist, you know. Like, how did you break your wrist? A uh, car crashed into me. And, like, you know, and then, I uh, fell down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> and, so uh, dark. yeah, so, I mean, they pushed it back. And, you know, I mean, um, David Boreanaz was great. I loved working with him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, it was good, man. It was good. Yeah. It's good. It was fun, dude. Like, I, I mean, honestly, like, it's, yeah, it was kind of fun to be, like, sort of an action hero. Yeah. You know, kind of guy. And then you feel badass when the, uh, when the crow lands on your shoulder. Yeah, how the hell do they do that? They have a trainer and, like, a, a fucking little nougat? That dude, it's fucking you? gnarly, dude. <laughs> like, first of all, like, you know, just trying to pretend, like, dude, you know, have the cool guy thing going on. Sure. And this crow's like, <laughs> 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 your fucking head, you know what I mean, like, it's crazy, but yeah, I, you know, they put, like, this little kind of, like, food or whatever, and they just have a train, it's amazing, dude, the thing just kind of, like, and, you know, they let me practice with it a little bit, right, and, right, you know, still, you're just like, you know, I couldn't imagine staying in mode, staying in mode, no, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, it's like, fucking thing, like, a wing hit your head, and you go, yeah. continue to look menacing yeah. and shit, it's like, oh my yeah. god, but it's tight, dude, like, I was impressed, those things are smart, yeah. yeah, they're really smart. Yeah, we <laughs> couldn't keep my composure. Be like, yeah. <laughs> twitching out when it's coming near me. Like, it's, it's good. We got the shot. Yeah, Mikey, stop talking though. Read the lines, okay? <laughs> the wind picks up, and you don't want to leave the house. So, yeah. you know, but okay. Dude, did you guys see that video? It was like on YouTube, where there's like a crow, and it's like literally like egging on these two cats, and it's like trying to get them to fight. And then literally gets the crow, the cats to fight, and then like literally the crows just like jumping around, <laughs> watching this shit, and they fall off a roof and shit, and they're going no. at it, and the crows just like that's digging the first the thing I'm doing in. when this is done. And he's like literally he's going behind one cat, and then he flies to the other one. He's like trying to get them together, and yeah. he's like, dude, this is antagonizing <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> they are smart, dude. They're yeah. just like I'm gonna get you little bitches to fight. <laughs> Thinking you get up and knock my nest down, you hold the fuck on, right? Uh, yeah. So you're going through this series of, of movies. Um, when's the point that you just realized that hey, this is the rock bottom. This is enough. Was it you were you starting not to get work or having trouble with on set with work, or was it kind of like work and everything else didn't matter anymore? Well, I gotta tell you, like for the most part, you know, I've had my few hiccups here and there but for the most part I've been sober at work like Mm -hmm. you know even when I was fucked up Mm -hmm. um if I had to clean up before work I would do it you know but um so I mean it really I mean honestly like yeah my career is getting affected but that wasn't even enough sure you know like I think like the biggest you know kind of thing that I as I took everything for granted kind of like, I, I stopped realizing how lucky I was, yeah. and I just was willing to let it all go. And I didn't care. Like, mm-hmm. I just didn't care. And, like, uh, it got to, um, it just got to a point where, you know, I looked in the mirror. And it's, and it's always that same old shit, but I was looking in the mirror, and I just didn't recognize who I was anymore. Like, um, you know. And I was like, I was with a girl and I, I still love her and, you know, and I was just seeing what it's doing to her mm-hmm. and just yeah. sort of like the whole toxic thing. And it's just, you know, I just realized I didn't want to be that anymore. Like, that's when, that's yeah. when I knew it was done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just, you know, I got, 
some crazy shit happened mm -hmm. in like my life and you know for good reasons I did sort of feel sorry for myself for sure. a while and you know I was like you know because I actually had bouts of heroin addiction like I went through it and then I stopped and then I do a little coke and whatever but it's like heroin really drags me down so then when I was like kind of in this really bad place I was just like fuck it dude I'm gonna shoot up heroin again and give up and uh you know, like a lot of times we don't die, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like I'm not suicidal, but it was like, I didn't give a shit, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's like, um, and a lot, you know, and I was like on a four year run and it was like, I'm like, dude, this is four years, man. Like my life, like the world is moving on. Like yeah. people are, you know, you're like in your own little prison. Sure. So, you know, I, uh, yeah, just couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. I think that's the thing that, again, for people that, you know, tune in for uh, for different reasons and, and don't understand is that it really is such a fucking prison in your mind and it messes with your head because there's such a part of you that wants to be in the driver's seat, but it's not. Yeah. And that, that addiction is, and it's just such a fucked feeling. Dude, it's, it's, you know... Yeah, I don't even know. I'm trying to figure out a way to kind of describe it. It's yeah, you've lost, yeah, you've definitely like lost control, and uh, you know it's it's like a vicious cycle. You know what I mean? Like the more like you do this shit, the worse it's gonna get. The yeah. more you're gonna feel sorry for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to. You know. I mean, and it all, like, stems from, like, deeper kind of issues, like, I, you know, I suffer from depression, personally, you know, Same. and, uh, you know, that just, it, it just exacerbates it, yeah. so it's like, you know, you have to get to this point where you're just like, you know what, because we all naturally want to be like, I know what's up, dude, I don't need to be told what to do, or whatever, but you have to get to a point, because we are... You know, we are like a flock of birds, dude. We need each other. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, it's like you have to get to the point where you're just like, I need to take direction. Yeah. I need yeah. to like, you know, I don't know what's up right now and I need help, you know, and that's a fucking hard thing to do. Man. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, you know? I, and I relate because for me, my recognition of it came after my divorce to my, my kid's mom and you know, I blame that, that marriage and stuff. And then realizing now where I'm at in life, it's like, it's all the fucked up shit that happened to me when I was a little kid that led me to the kind of relationships that I sought out and probably, you know, kind of the same for her and a lot of her, whatever her trauma was. And we just bonded with that fucking trauma. And we were like a supernova. Like when things were good, it was fiery passion. But when things were bad, it was a fucking explosion of dynamite, you know? Exactly. And, um, yeah, yeah. Same thing, man. Like relationships, everything, you know, my ex wife, dude, it's just, you know, and, yeah, you're like the biggest part of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's not, the drugs are a symptom, but it's right. your fucking thinking that is what, you know, gets you into trouble. And it's also like your mind is going to tell you that, you know, you can figure this out on your own kind of thing, but like, you really can't, like, yeah. um, you know. And, uh, I mean, the good news for me, at least, is like, you know, my life isn't, you know, exactly, you know, where I expect it to be, you know, sure. like, but, you know, like, the amount of work that we put in as drug addicts, you focus that work on the positive things every day, you know, like, it's amazing, dude. it's like, you know, I, you know, every time I'm like, God, I want to, you know, shoot up, I fucking, you know, go on a run. Or, mm -hmm. you know, do something loving for somebody, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And that energy just starts surrounding you. And before you know it, it's like you don't even want to do it anymore. Yeah. Like, well, and it builds, which what I'm hearing too, is that the thing of, that we, I think, at least for me, was wanting a sense of connectivity. And like I said, very much a shy kid, awkward kid. Only time mm -hmm. I felt comfortable when I was being a goofball or doing a goofball voice or yeah. whatever it was or... Um, so it was in wanting that connectivity and then you know it started out that way and it was a good time but then it got so far away from it that 
I lost that ability to um, identify those positive things, those act of kindnesses, the, 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 um, was the term that uh, Lamar Odom shared about Kobe Bryant, selfishly unselfish. So it's like, yeah, in your yeah. doing for somebody else and being there for them, it's, it's, it's unselfish, but at the time it's coming back to you tenfold and you don't even realize because it's now giving you a sense of community to reach out, to help others, to be present for those, yeah. you know, being present for my children now or my friends or whatever. It's, it's kind of a trip. It's like, yeah. I don't, I don't even, is that how you do it? Guys, can you confirm for me that's how you do it? Because I was never very good at this. Now yeah. I'm good. I guess I'm getting there. Yeah, it's weird, man. I think us drug addicts are fucking spiritual as hell, dude. Like, mm-hmm. I just think, like, just naturally we are. And, like, in the right place, we, we just are, dude. But, uh, yeah, man, um, it's funny, dude. Like, I remember just in my 20s, like, you know, this girl I was dating, I mean, she was, like, crying. I was literally, you know, I was late teens, 20s, and it just, she was freaked out because, like, if we went out anywhere, it's like, okay, well, I have to make at the time was screwdrivers. So I had to drink up like three screwdrivers just so we could go out. Sure. And I was like trying to explain to her, like, I don't know. I just don't feel comfortable around people unless I'm drunk. You know? anxiety. Yeah. yeah and I just freaked yeah. her out, dude. Mm-hmm. It just freaked her out. And it's like, yeah, it's still like that, man. I mean, you know, like I think every time, and believe me, two and a half years, dude, like I'm still literally like, I, you know, a, a, a family member died basically just recently, and I was with my cousin. <clears throat> well, it's my cousin's mom, but uh, yeah, I was there for my cousin, and like, you know, I hadn't seen my whole family in like, I don't know, like 20 years or anything, and I was like, and dude, I never wanted to drink so fucking bad. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like, you know, but it's like, you get better at like weighing the consequences of everything. You know, I don't want to lose everything that I've gotten. Right. You know, I, I don't know. I feel like, you know, I'm not a religious person, but I feel like there's something out there maybe. And I think, you know, just, um, you can kind of feel it in your instincts and shit. And it's like, you know, like, um, yeah, I just, you know, get that vibe that it's, like, time to sort of suit up and just, you know, do something to be proud of. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, and I think one of the, the how you put it as uh, addicts being spiritual is that I've had people say that they find that addicts in sobriety tend to be more empathic as well. And that's kind of why, like, you talk about, like, family environment. I know for me, certain settings and situations, it's like... I'm, I'm a same kind of thought, boy, I could go for a rum and coke or 12 right about now. But there's yeah. those things that are in kind of trigger moments or, or there's there's emotions and feelings that are there yeah. that maybe you haven't really healed it with the family member or you still kind of feel with that old dynamic that just felt like shit. And you're like, OK, yeah. I got to put on a suit of armor and just sometimes that's what you got to do, man. Yeah, you know? absolutely. But those times, those few times that I feel like, cause it's gotten so much easier. Those few times that I put on that suit of armor totally are way less now that like things are so much easier. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, dude, like I wake up in the morning and it's like, I'm not worried about the cops coming into my house. I'm not like, you know, I'm not like, you know, fucking, I mean, I'm just, I wake up and I have no problems, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like, um, none that I can't handle, like basically. Right. And, and I don't know, dude, like, you know, it's, it sucks. Like, it's funny. Cause I don't know if I would have been here if I didn't go through that whole journey. So sure. I'm kind of glad that I did. And it's, uh, you know, so it's weird. It's like, this is going to sound terrible, but it's like, almost like recommend it, (laughs) you know, but like, you know, good luck, man, (laughs) because you might die doing it. But, you know, I learned so much, you know, from doing this and I wouldn't be so, you know, I wouldn't feel the way that I do about life now if I hadn't have done that. So, I mean, it's, it's a journey. Yeah, 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 for sure. And people that are kind of going through recovery, and you know, if you're, you're listening and fans of Edward and hearing that, you kind of remember that. It's just such a part of it is once you find that 
being grateful, you know, that's kind of the, you don't take it all for granted, like you said anymore. It's kind of like, okay, life is, life is kind of dope. I'm good yeah. with this. Life, less sober life is the dope, not the dope anymore. Yeah. No, it's, 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 you know, like, you know, especially since I've gotten so, and I just like, and you start focusing on other people other than yourself and your own like morbid fucking just, you know, whatever, like, you know, then you realize, like, what the fuck was I bitching about? Dude? Like, literally, I'm so lucky. Everything, you know, I've, I've had it so good. Like, I'm surprised I haven't been, like, striked with lightning or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just, you know, it's, I mean, it could always be so much worse. Yeah, and absolutely. Just, you know, like, you know, I think as long as you have, like, a roof over your head and you have what you need, you have food, you have, you know, just things that you need, you know. Mm -hmm. And for me, I've been blessed. I've I've been able to have that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. I'm not spoiled rotten, <laughs> but like I have what I need. Sure. And it's like, I think that's kind of where it's at. You yeah, know? Awesome. Yeah. Well, we like to finish up with some fun shit, Edward. We do throw out some rapid fire questions. So, are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll kick it off, Mikey. Uh, I'm gonna steal yours. If you could have dinner with just oh, one nice. person. Living or not, Sorry. who would it be okay. and why? So if you could have dinner with just one person, living or not, who would it be and why? Shakira. Because <laughs> I want Humber. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that Super Bowl performance <laughs> in the United <laughs> game? Okay, yes. so the funny thing is that's the same answer two episodes in a row, a row for totally different reasons. <laughs> really? Oh, shit. Oh, oh, shit. oh that's right. That's yeah, right. That's that. right. But we had this, uh, her name's uh, Dasha. Dot uh, Dishama. Yeah. She's a uh, uh, big in the yogi world. Yogi yoga lady. You know, yeah. Really crazy background. I mean, her mom uh, basically lost her mind from a combination of alcohol, LSD, and other drugs. Oh, and so she had a pretty crazy upbringing. Uh, but turned it around. And I mean, you talked to her, and she's just like this bubbly, like total energy ball. But yeah, she said Shakira too. No, she said Shakira to play her in a movie. That's right. That's and right. Because yeah, yeah. the hips don't lie. So, that's right. That's what it was. Shakira, thanks for the honest answer. <laughs> you know, we had hey, that's what we want on here. Knocking doors down. Honesty. You yeah, know what I mean? We've got so, everything from God to their grandma. I like it. One guy's like, fuck God. I want Shakira, dude. Come on. Like, God's kind of like to get laid. <laughs> that's what. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, oh shit. Uh, okay, I got one. And I was curious. I just want to know. What is the craziest thing a fan has done? Like, have they stalked you, gotten tattoos of your face on them, anything like that? What's the gnarliest fan story? Oh, shit. Um... I don't know. Like I have to. Uh, like, yeah, let's see. I've had some fucking gnarly ones. Yeah. Dude. I've had some gnarly ones. I've had. Uh, I've had. I've been threatened that I get like someone would inject me with AIDS. Like what? Shit. Shit. Yeah. Like I've had. Uh, I've had people like find my house. Oh you shit. Know, shit like that. But uh, you know. Um, yeah. I don't know. Like so. We're th that's scary. Gnarly. I don't know. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know. Well, Dude, how you go to these conventions, man? I've been doing these, and you know, like, uh, God damn it, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, it's been the, kind of screwed up. But uh, yeah, I mean, for the most part, like, um, you know, it's funny because I, I, I thought I was gonna hate it because it's like, you know, just whatever. And, and, right. and honestly, most of the fans are pretty cool. Right, right. Really yeah. Nice. I don't think I've ever been to one. I've always wanted to. I've, I've never been into to smaller one. ones. I've always wanted. I've signed up for the lottery for like San Diego and and those comic cons and stuff like that. But it would be cool to check it out. Oh fuck yeah, yeah. Man. Oh, dude! Yeah. Well, I dig the cosplay, especially now. Hot chicks are doing all the. Oh my god! Dude. Just like holy oh. shit! I saw this one of this chick because I love Boba Fett and she was dressed that way. I was like. <laughs> All right, this is oddly doing it for me. I know that character is true, really but she's bro. rocking. <laughs> <laughs> well, she had like the That's cleavage funny, out, and, you know, the yeah, midriff. She's, she's, like, and... she's like hot bubble fat. Yeah, don't oh, make fun God. of me. <laughs> My character is some weird stuff too. <laughs> No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. Everything oh, I'm into shit. is completely normal. No, it's not. 
<laughs> oh my god. But uh, so the conventions are pretty cool, people are pretty chill. I mean, other than the guy that asked you to sign the American History X. Yeah. Oh, oh, dude, yeah, I mean... But was that more of a joke for him? Or no, no, I, I, dude, I've it, had, I wouldn't think it would be a joke at all. I'm sure he was very serious about that. Right? Yeah, dude, I've had I've had even worse. It's like, you know, I, it's like, I don't even utter some of the things people have come up to sure. and asked, like, sure, sure, in terms yeah. of shit like that. I mean, you can, you can, uh... Yeah, I mean, it's just... I don't know, man. Like, yeah. you go all over the world, you know, well, yeah, I mean, especially, like, all over this country, and it's like, you know... I'm LA native, so yeah, uh -huh. you, you realize how different right. the culture is, you know, in right. different places sure, sure. and shit. But um, you know, but even then, like you know, for the most part, most people are pretty chill and nice. And so, how did the is somebody threatening you with an AIDS needle come about? Like, was it an argument you guys had or something, or did you just walk no, up to you? No, 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 no. He was. I was not answering like letters. Oh. That he was sending me, and then he's like, "I'm gonna show up to your house, and you know." So it's one of those Eminem would stand that, type deals. Yes, then you yes. just wrap me sooner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. Got you. And, uh, yeah, he did show up to me. <laughs> oh, fuck. So, yeah. oh, shit. He didn't inject me with AIDS, sure. but yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah, 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 that was probably like the gnarliest. That is the gnarliest one. That would trip me the fuck. That out. fucking freaked that me out, me yeah. out, dude. You're getting these letters, and all of a sudden they show up like, no, dude, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I tried to get like a, a restraining order. Yeah. Back then, yeah. And back then you couldn't get one mm -hmm. unless they actually did something, something to, you, yeah. to you. So it's like. You know, I was like, with the police, I'm like, wait a minute, so he has to inject me with AIDS before he tries right. to yeah. restrain me? I don't agree with this. <laughs> like, yeah. Pretty much, for a long time, just punch yourself in the face and be like, that crazy motherfucker did this. Yeah, you see this? I should have done that, yeah. Mm. But now I'm, like, scared. I'm like, oh, God, I didn't, like, you know, open up the yeah. Pandora's box again. Oh, so... Lord. Stay the fuck away. <laughs> Freak! <laughs> that guy. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, uh, on, if you could travel forwards or backwards in time, but you had to stay there, where what time frame would you go? You think the future huh. would be more interesting going to, or a past time period? Wait, could I go back as myself when I was younger, or can I? Or would I? Oh, for you, you yes. That's a good question. I would go we'll, back. We'll, for bend sure. the, yeah. we'll bend it. Yeah, I would go back. Fuck yeah, dude. Are you kidding me? I would go back and do everything right. Sure. And then hopefully be like multi multi millionaire. <laughs> What's the point of where you look at though that where you could go, okay, everything this is the launching point where it could have gone right. Because you gotta figure out okay, your parents, they yeah. created, you know, as it's all they created you, here it is, you had the childhood that you did. Yeah. You know, you went and lived with aunt, aunt and uncle right at I would point. probably go back to uh, probably my late teens, you know, kind of when it was like I was just doing acid and mushrooms and smoking weed and shit, and, you know, just be like, okay, we're just gonna leave it here. Trust me. <laughs> Not you know, the next level. Like, little, things are gonna get yeah. fucked up if you don't stop, you know. Sure. We're gonna do everything. <clears throat> we're never gonna take any of this for granted. We're gonna always show up to work and, you know, uh, yeah, I would definitely go back in time. That's cool. Yeah. It would be like hot, you know, uh, hot to time machine. Hot to time machine. I fucking love that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I fucking love that movie. Google. <laughs> yeah. uh, shit. So if I were to say Google something, you wouldn't. I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> it's <laughs> Google. Um, yeah. If they were to make a movie about you, who would play you? Who would you want to play you in a movie about Young, yourself? Young yourself, all the way up through. You have a vision of people that can pull those off. Justin Bieber. <laughs> Justin Bieber. <laughs> right? There you go. There you go. Oh, uh, shit. You could get, like, whoever, like, young Arnold, <laughs> the CG Arnold in the thing. And we, yeah, yeah. Want that, but, and try to get uh, Shannon Tweed in there, too. Huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, she's still a smoke show. Fucking it. I know, she still looks hell, hell yeah. yeah. All right. You ever, like, a, yeah, I made out with that chick. No, you did not. Got it on film. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. I'll yeah. show you. No, it's not that kind of film, guys. This is legit. Yeah. Oh, shit. Well, very cool. Mr. Uh, Edward Furlong, man, this has been a blast and an honor. It's uh, cool to, oh, to, to sit and bullshit with someone and, and you kind of grow up watching their stuff and into adulthood. And, and most of all, to see and hear how uh, good you're doing. And, yeah. Uh, really Congrats on the two and a half years. Congrats on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, man. You know, yeah, I mean, just, you know. 
for anyone listening that wants to, you know, do this, you can, dude. You, mm -hmm. you really can, man. And, uh, you know, don't, you know, time's ticking, dude. You know, you, you, the, every day that you waste doing this shit is another day gone. And it's like, you'll, you'll, you'll regret that. For so. sure. But you can do it. You yeah, can do it. For sure. Yeah, because we, uh, you know, what is that? The days of our lives, they're sand through the hour <laughs> of our lives. You know, oh, dude. we don't know when that last pebble drops. So make the yeah. most of it, right? Yeah, and it's dropping fast. Oh, God. Right? Oh, my yeah. God. I know some people feel 2020 has been really long. For me, it's felt so far. Oh, no. Like, it's going quick as shit for me. We're coming up on Thanksgiving almost, dude. Yeah, Thanksgiving yeah, yeah. Next no, month. It's, it's going, it's going quick. It's just been the worst year yeah. ever. Like, it's insane. Yeah. No, it's we're all for it. Everybody's It must be like a, yeah, like a, you know, like something on the back. To, like, it's one of those fucking <laughs> days that are like, you know. Right. We're in the paradox. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. Well, thank you, Edward. It's been awesome. Awesome, man. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks, man. It's been great, you guys. Thank you. Rhyme.